Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the chemistry guru. Now for the topic on gaseous states, we know that the ideal gas equation, it is particularly important. And we actually use the ideal gas equation to do things like graph sketching and calculation questions. So there are certain common applications involving the ideal gas equation that will be useful for calculation based questions. So in this video, we want to spend some time to talk about three applications involving making use of ideal gas equations. All right, the first thing that we should do is, of course, we should look at the ideal gas equation and we get ourselves familiar with ideal gas equation. Now, the equation is actually fairly straightforward. PV equals to nRT, P for pressure, V for volume, N it is the number of mole of the gas, R it is the gas constant, and T will be the temperature. And for using this ideal gas equation in this form, we must make sure that all the terms it has to be in SI unit. So for pressure, it has to be in Pascal. So maybe let me write this down. The unit that we have for pressure, it has to be in Pascal. Now for volume, it has to be in meter cube. So volume has to be in meter cube. Now N, which is the number of mole of gas, obviously it will still be the number of mole. Then R, is the gas constant, which the value inside the data booklet, it is given as 8.31, and the unit is joule per Kelvin per mole. So I can put this here, joule per Kelvin per mole. Now this value, it is inside the data booklet. So if we need to, we can refer to that. Then temperature, of course, it has to be in Kelvin. Temperature has to be in K. So if I'm using the ideal gas equation as it is, then what I have to make sure is I have to convert all the terms into SI unit so that I can substitute into this ideal gas equation and I determine whatever that needs to be determined. Now next, let's look at some common applications involving the ideal gas equation that we will encounter. The first guy is related to Boyle's law where the temperature, it is a constant. Now sometimes what the question will give us is they'll give us a before and after scenario. Before scenario, they'll give us information involving the pressure and volume. Then after scenario, maybe they give us the information involving pressure or volume, but one of the term, it is an unknown. And if the question says that given the temperature, it is a constant, can you find the unknown term? Then what we can do is we can make use of the ideal gas equation. We do some manipulation based on the concept or based on the knowledge that temperature, it is a constant. Then we try to write out an expression for us to do determination. So what we use is always start off with the ideal gas equation, PV equals to nRT. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to determine which are the terms that are constant. Usually inside the question, they will say that I have a fixed number of mole of gas and it undergoes certain changes. So usually the number of mole will be a constant. Gas constant R, of course, it has to be a constant. And in this case, because the question tells me that the temperature it is a constant, so I know that T is also a constant. So maybe let me highlight all these three terms here. NRT are all constant terms, which means that pressure multiplied by volume, it is a constant term. So any permutation of pressure times volume, it should give me a constant term. So the before scenario where the pressure is P1 and the volume is V1, it has to be equal to the after scenario where the pressure is P2 and the volume is V2. So in terms of manipulation, what we do is we determine all the constant terms and we write all the constant term to the right-hand side of the equation. We keep the variable terms on the left-hand side of the equation. Then since PV is a constant term, P1V1 equals to P2V2. So any permutation of PV will give me the same value. P1V1 is equals to P2V2. So with this expression, then, if we know the information involving the before scenario, pressure one times volume one, then if I am given maybe the pressure at the second scenario, I can find the volume of the second scenario or vice versa. Now next, let's look at another scenario where the pressure is constant. Now if pressure is constant, this is according to Charles law, what we want to determine again is, what if I have another before and after scenario, then how do I manipulate this equation? to give me something that is easy for us to apply. Now, first thing is same thing. We look out for the terms that are constant 
and usually the number of more of guests stays constant so n it is a constant guest constant it is obviously a constant now what is constant here is pressure it is a constant so therefore p is a constant term so all the terms that are constant will be this guy pressure number of mole and gas constant so what i do is i write down all the variable terms on the left hand side of the expression and i write out all the constant term on the right hand side of the equation so what i have to do is i have to put v and t over on the left hand side so the volume over the temperature because i bring the t over to the left hand side equals to n times r divided by pressure because now the p which is a constant term i group them together with all the other constant terms remember all these terms are a constant so therefore v divided by t it is a constant term so once we have this v over t it is a constant term what does it tell us it tells us that the volume divided by temperature in the first scenario and the volume divided by temperature in the second scenario it is exactly the same so the expression that we will have that we can use will be something like this v1 over t1 is equal to v2 over t2 so we can make use of this expression similar to the previous case usually the question will give us information involving the before scenario what is the volume and the temperature then the after scenario when there's a difference in temperature then what will be the new volume given that the pressure it is constant so again what we do is we just manipulate the ideal gas equation and i write down all the variable terms on one side of the equation put the constant terms on the other side of the equation once we can do that i know that this ratio volume divided by temperature it is a constant term so v1 over t1 equals to v2 over t2 now there's another type of question which i think is also quite common that we will want to discuss and the scenario is here i have two containers with two different volumes and each of these container it contains a certain gas so let's say this is gas number one this is gas number two and the pressure and volume of gas number one is given and the pressure and volume of gas number two is also given so what if i allow these two gases to mix via this pipe here and when everything stabilizes what will be the final pressure when the two gases are mixed at constant temperature so what we can do to answer this question is just a very simple expression but i think it's good to go through how this expression is derived because in this case if i want to consider how do i combine the pressure and volume together in both containers it seems a bit confusing but it is difficult for us to add pressure and maybe a bit difficult for us to consider adding volume but what we can do is when i have these two gases being mixed together what must be true is in total the number of mole of gas one and the number of mole of gas two will be equals to the number of mole in total of course assuming that the two gases they don't react with each other so the derivation actually it is here the total number of mole is equals to the number of mole inside container one plus number of mole inside container two then since pv equals to nrt i can write down number of mole equals to pressure times volume divided by rt i can actually substitute this term back into this n total equals to n1 plus n2 so n total now becomes total pressure times total volume divided by rt n1 now becomes p1 v1 divided by rt n2 now becomes p2 v2 divided by rt and since the question says that the temperature is constant so r is also a constant so you notice the denominator in all these three terms all are rt terms right and r is constant t is a constant so i can cancel away all the denominator and finally we end up with this expression that we would use total pressure times total volume equals to p1 v1 plus p2 v2 so eventually we don't really need to memorize or learn how to derive this i just need to know that i can make use of this expression and i can calculate the final pressure when the two gases are allowed to mix all right so back to the question at the beginning if pressure one is one atmosphere volume one is five meter cube and pressure number two is four atmosphere volume number two is 10 meter cube and using back the expression that we have derived earlier p total v total equals to p1 v1 plus p2 v2 then the total pressure it is the one that i want to determine 
Total volume will just be the volume of container 1 plus the volume of container 2 assuming that the volume for this pipe here it is negligible so it will just be 5 plus 10 so it will be here P1 V1 I can substitute the terms here P1 will be 1 atmosphere V1 will be 5 meter cube plus P2 V2 the terms will be here 4 atmosphere which will be here times 10 meter cube which will be here so this will work out to be 45 and I bring this 15 term over I can determine that the total pressure will be 3 atmosphere. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the ideal gas equation and some applications involving calculation questions for gaseous state. Now if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.